Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. In today's video, I'm going to teach you the strategy that I use nearly every time that I go beach fishing. I'm going to be fishing for Mulloway, and I'm going to teach you how I choose the spot that I'm going to fish, and I'm also going to show you how I bait up and the different baits that I'm using. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and let's get into it. So I'm back down on the beach. I was here about three hours ago and what a difference three hours makes. Quite incredible how the, how the beach changes in that period of time. When I was down here before this was super shallow, I actually really liked the look of it because behind me there, there's this little shallow bit of white water, waves breaking, with just a little bit of a channel in front of it. The baits that I'm using this afternoon are live mullet, and squid. The squid I caught about a month ago and I've got it, I took it out of my freezer. So I'm going to grab one of those live mullet and put it on and I'll show you how to do that. All I've done is I've brought down five, I've got five mullet and I'm going to reach in and grab one of these fellas. You can see the size of these, um, look at that. Whoa. Beautiful little fish. It only took me about 10 minutes this afternoon to catch eight or nine of these down at the local harbour. So I'm going to whack this on and chuck it out. This is not a huge hook. It's actually only a 6 -o, So I could potentially go a little bit bigger. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook it between these two fins. I'm not going to hook it through the mouth. I'm going to hook it above the backbone between those two fins like that. And you can see here I've got a relatively short leader and I've got a sinker that is a running sinker like so. So now it'll be great to see this go off with something big. Especially in the next half an hour or so. Um, it's high tide in about one hour, so great time of the day, good tide. In fishing, our goal is always to use our knowledge and insight to put ourselves in the best position to catch fish. By doing our homework, we can greatly increase our rate of success. Tonight, my target species is Mulloway, so I am tailoring my baits specifically for them. This limits other species that I may catch. If catching dinner was my only goal, I could make some simple adjustments to my rigs and bait and catch some tailor or other species. But that's not my goal. So I am willing to sacrifice that to catch the holy grail of the fish world. Okay, so now I'm going to put on my squid bait. This is the head of a squid that I caught. You can see how beautiful that looks. Good looks. You could just about eat that squid. How good is that? So I've already cut off one tentacle there. I'll cut off another one. So this is not going to be a huge bait. The hook I've got is slightly smaller. What I'm going to do is I'm going to roll that in the sand because that will help me to peel the skin off the, um, to expose the white flesh. Otherwise, if you try and do that, when um, without putting some sand on it to get a bit of grip you can't really peel that off too difficult to do that I just want to expose a bit of that lovely white there and so I'm going to put I'm going to put that lovely bit of tentacle on now that could catch a mulloway or it could certainly catch a brim or a flathead or a whole variety of things so we'll see we'll see what's out there With this lovely little bit of squid here, I'm only using a single hook. I'm going to put the, the hook right through it. I'm going to pull it all the way through. You can see that. Then I'm actually going to um, 
put it in there again and then I'm going to sorry I'm thinking and talking at the same time I'm actually going to um, hook it in so that it sits it sits like that if you can see what I mean so the, the barb of the hook isn't too far from the bottom of the tentacle and then I'm going to, ouch, got myself. I'm actually going to put a half hitch around the top to hold that into place. So that leaves me with my squid tentacle bait with lots of barb exposed. And uh, even a decent sized brim should be able to catch it on that. So, and it's rigged up the same the same as the live bait rig really. So I'll just show this to you. I have my sinker attached to a swivel that is running on the main line, down to a swivel and then my leader with my bait. So that's a, a, running, a running rig. And uh, I'm going to whack it just out the back. I'll be really surprised if I don't get something good out there especially as this sun gets a little bit lower. I'm just adjusting the drag. I don't want it too light. Um, okay. The old salmon like, uh, they like a bit of squid, so I might get hit by salmon. I'm actually not burling tonight. Uh, I often do burly off the beach, but I've just kept it pretty simple. And I really like the look of it. Also, there's, uh, you can see there's a full moon. Or oh, it's actually, it's not the full moon. It's, I think the full moon's either tomorrow night or the next night. But it means I'll be able to see a little bit when the, the light starts to fade. So now it's pretty much a waiting game. There's this little patch of white water just out here. I was trying to cast, I really wanted to land that mullet on the edge of where the white water drops off into that little, that little trough there. I really like that there's a bit of white water there. So I think with my next cast, I'll just give it a little bit more oomph, but really it should be fine anywhere out there. Okay, time to relax. Certainly a lot worse things that you could be doing. Hang on, something's going on. I just saw my rod just going. Sometimes when a big fish comes near the mullet, it freaks out. Look at that, see how it's going like that? I might go and pick it up. Yeah, often the mullet will freak out if there's something coming near it and you'll see your rod's, rod tip start to 
gets shaken about a fair bit. I haven't felt anything. What I'm hoping is in the next hour that a nice big golden slab comes sniffing in here and either eats my squid or my mullet. No more, no more action. I can feel the mullet. I can actually feel the mullet. I can feel it kicking. That's good. Oh, what's that? Yeah, it's a little bit of excitement. You can see the tide is still, the water is still coming out from the lake, but it's just at that transition period where the tide will get to its peak and that'll slow down. There's actually a little bit too much current over there. Mulloway don't like a lot of current. They're a little bit lazy. So this is a nice little protected spot in here. How beautiful is that sunset? Look at that amazing orange over there. Just need to top it off with a big fish. I have not had a bite yet. And that nor'easter is a little chilly. The weather's starting to warm up, but yeah, it was supposed to drop off that wind. It's supposed to drop about an hour ago. But I'm okay. I've got a t-shirt underneath this long sleeve shirt, so I'm not totally frozen. I think I've got to turn my torch off. There you go, turn that off. Awesome. Well, the conditions look pretty good. It's a nice bit of white water out there now, surrounded by a good depth of channel. And I've got a lovely live mullet swimming around out there. And some squid. So it's like this when you're fishing for mulloway. you just got to put the time in. You've got to put yourself in the right spot. The right time with some good bait. And make an investment. <laughs> I'm just looking for a bit of a return on my investment. What a beautiful night. Full moon, or oh, not quite full moon. I've caught big jewfish on the full moon before, so there's all sorts of different theories, but you can catch them. I've caught them quite a few times on the full moon, so it's possible. At the moment, I've got a live mullet out and um, a squid bait, but I'm going to butterfly, butterfly this, this little mullet and try a butterfly butterfly mullet. So essentially I'm going to fillet it from the tail up. Oops, it's slippery. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to fillet it all the way up to the head and then stop about there and then turn over and repeat the process. It's a little bit fiddly on this small fish. I'm going to turn it like that. But I'm going to um, I don't want to cut myself. Oh, this looks a bit rough, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm basically... Okay, uh, it'll work. Okay. So now I'm going to take the middle out. So essentially you've got two fillets like so. And I'm going to put that on and hook it through the mouth. And that's what you call a butterfly fish bait. Just going to go and pull my line in and whack him on.
Just mixing it up a little bit. I mean, it means I'll have two mullet baits out, but that's okay. Just got to wash my hands. Where are all the fish? Where are they hiding? It's only about 15 minutes before high tide right now. Okay. Time to swap the bait over. You can see my um, squid bait hasn't been touched. So, yep. Let's remove that squid bait. Gotta see, it's a bit hard to see where the um oh, that's okay. I think I still got my um it's gonna try and pull it off like that, that'll be easier. Okay. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do with this little mullet here is I'm coming gonna come from underneath and just put it Put the hook up through, oh, I think I'll do it again. Didn't quite get it in the middle of the skull. That's it. Put that through like that. You can see that um, it's a little bit hacked, but it doesn't matter, it's good. Okay, all right, I'm gonna whack him out. Maybe some of his um, blood and juices will attract something. Preferably not a shark. Oops. No way. A fish just swam into my shoe. I'm standing on it. What a classic. I've got a little fish in my shoe. the heck is this? This little fish swam into my shoe. Look at it. While I was walking around in the water. <laughs> what a classic. Looks like a little baby flathead or some sort of Thing. I've got this thing wiggling around in my shoe. There you go, it's never happened before. Alrighty, back to the waiting game again. I've got a fish. It's a tailor, I think. I'm not sure. Well, I threw out this butterfly mullet. It's not what I'm looking for. It's just a small fish, or relatively small. Oh, well, hang on, he just just got off. I believe it was a tailor. He's taken half of that mullet. I want to see if the line is frayed. Well, there's no fraying, but I'm pretty sure that was a tailor. Look, there's no head left on the mullet. Somehow the hook is... I did have that fish on for a while. But, um... 
Oh well. I'll chuck this out again. Can't hook it up the same way as I had it before. But, um, ouch. Yeah, I think that was a tailor. But I'll probably, I risk getting bitten off with this because I have a 25 pound leader. But, we'll see what happens. Oops. Yep, that was Terry Taylor. It just felt like a moderate sized fish, maybe 40 centimetres long. I think I will hold the line. Because I expect I'll get another tailor bite, probably. And I still have a whole live mullet out on the other rod. It's interesting how that cut bait with the with the scent, the, flat, the, the blood attracted the tailor. It's almost high tide. Fifteen minutes. I'm looking forward to the next six months of beach fishing, going to be fantastic in warm weather. I keep watching my other line because uh, it would be great to see that bend right over. This is not going to be a long session tonight. Just wanted to fish for an hour or so around the high tide. So I'm going to head home and um, relax for a little while. Well, no more bites just yet. Hang on, I've got a bite now. Something's having a bit of a go. Yep. Oh! It's just a tailor. I can tell it's a tailor. I don't have any bait left. It has not come back for it. I might not have any bait left. It's typical that you catch Taylor at this time of the evening, just on dark. All right, I think I might have lost my bait, so I'm going to wind it in. There you go. Just what I was talking about before. I mentioned I didn't have a leader. And uh, bitten off. 
and you can see the fraying, the fraying on the line. See the lines frayed up there? So that was, um, wow, it's amazing, it's frayed a long way up. So that was Mr. Taylor. So I need to do a little operation and fix this line up. I think it was a tailor having a go at it. So my live mullet was being very erratically whacked. And I cannot feel anything else on the end of the line now. I wonder if this has been bitten off as well. Okay. That's all that's left of my live mullet. I expect that was Terry Taylor again. <laughs> I think I better throw it out one more time. Well, there you go. It definitely wasn't a, uh, a muller weight. So I'll get my... Actually, I've got a slightly smaller one. Come here. The other one is there. <laughs> Come here. There's only two mullet in here. Oh, a lot of water between mullet. This one's a little bit smaller, so I think I might put him on. But it suits the hook size a little bit better. I'll wake him out there and um, see what happens. I might hold on to this one for a minute, I think. This little mullet is having a good swim on the other end. Hang on. Yeah, it's, what's going on? If I was fishing here with pilchards and gang hooks, I'd have a feed of tailor for dinner by now. Okay, so what's the time? Right on high tide. There's a lot of movement with that live bait. Hang on, what's going on? My line's gone slack. I've got a fish. Oh, what was that? I think I had a shark on then. I think I probably had a little bronze whaler. Hang on. Am I? That's really weird. That's really strange because it's. I had something on there and it had a fair bit of weight in it. And um, the line's not frayed. I'm going to put that other live mullet on and chuck it back out again. That was uh, interesting. I felt something quite heavy then. 
Ouch. So we'll just see if we can... Um, that's unusual that I'd get the, it back like that. I thought I might have been bitten off. <laughs> Whatever was biting it then swam in with it quite a way. That's um so that happens sometimes but the fish was swimming in with the bait that's why I was walking backwards because my line was going slack Let's see if there's something another one of whatever it was out there This is my last mullet. It really helps my channel when you hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell too so that you don't miss out on future videos. No fisherman has a 100% success rate. Every outing is exciting and you're always learning. Then when you achieve your goal, it is so sweet. Well, I'm just gonna sit this in the rod holder for a minute and do a bit of a basic pack up. Well, this has been my first Mulloway fish of the season. And the score is Mulloway one, Roger none. So I'm down here, I'm actually gonna pack up. I had five live mullet. I've got my last live mullet on at the moment. So maybe that score will change. But I've got my last live mullet on. The previous mullet, I had a fish pick up the live mullet and swim towards, towards me, maybe 10 feet. I struck and I felt a lot of weight. I actually thought, you know, I felt a lot of weight and then nothing. And I thought, maybe I've been bitten off by a shark. I pulled my line in with an empty hook and no fraying on the line. So I'm thinking, hmm, very interesting. Maybe I. That was the mystery fish that I was looking for. But anyways, um, I'm going to pack up my gear. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure today. I look forward to many more. I'm going to be targeting some big mulloway over the coming months, so I'll involve you in that. And I trust, trust it's been helpful looking at uh, just the rigs I've been using and baiting up and selecting this spot. The water looks really good. <clears throat> it actually looks really fishy. You'd expect to catch something here, but not tonight, but that's okay. I'm going to head home, have a shower, and chill out on the lounge for a little while. So you see you in the next video.